Crazy Larry drives a Ferrari off the edge of this 200-foot cliff at a rate of 150 feet per second. Write a guess of how far horizontally the car travels past the cliff. Insane Irma drives a beetle off the edge of this 200-foot cliff at a rate of 60 feet per second. That's about 41 miles per hour. Write a guess as to how far horizontally this car travels past the cliff. And as a special bonus question, which car will land first if they both reach the edge of the cliff at the exact same time? Both cars actually land at the exact same time because gravity pushes both cars down at the same rate. Here's the horizontal formula. V sub zero represents the velocity in the beginning. D sub zero represents the initial head start horizontally that this car gets. There's the Ferrari and the Beetle equations, whereas 150 and 60 are the initial velocities, and zero was the initial head start. This is the vertical formula, same letters, except for S sub zero means the vertical head start. Negative 16 is just the force of gravity here on Earth. There's 150 you see for the velocity of the Ferrari, and 200 was the initial head start vertically that the Ferrari got because it was on the 200 foot cliff. The same thing for the Beetle, 60 was its velocity. Now you can see the Ferrari is at, on the graph, the point 0, 200 at 0 seconds. Horizontally it was 150 feet across and 180 feet up at 1 second, 300 feet across and 136 feet in the air at 2 seconds, and 450 feet across and 56 feet in the air at 3 seconds before it landed on the ground. Now you'll look at the Volkswagen Beetle. You'll notice that at t equals 0, you're at the exact same place. At t equals 1, vertically, you're at the same place you were in the Ferrari, but horizontally it had only traveled 60 feet. Here it is again at t equals 2 and t equals 3, the vertical uh, amounts y were the exact same for the Ferrari and the Beetle. Horizontally though, the Beetle went not as far. Roland hits a pitch from Leon with an initial speed of 95 feet per second and an angle of 45 degrees. The ball was hit at a height of 2 feet off the ground. And this is a better look at the initial velocity. Here's the horizontal formula. 95 was the velocity initially, and 45 was your theta, the angle. The vertical motion formula, remember negative 16 is the gravitational pull of the Earth. The initial velocity was 95, and the theta was 45 degrees. H sub zero is 2 because your initial height of the ball was 2 feet off the ground. Now that we have those equations, let's go ahead and solve some real life questions about the baseball. First, for how much time is the ball in the air? So since we're talking about the ball being in the air, that's the height. So let's find the instant when the ball is no longer in the air. That would be a height of zero. So I'm going to use that y equation and plug it in right there, a zero in place of the y. So next, I have to realize that this is a quadratic equation. So there's my a, b, and c. Next, you can plug it into the quadratic formula. And that looks like that honking mess. And if you don't like doing that by hand, maybe you can do that on your quadratic formula solver on your calculator if you have one. Whatever you do, you end up getting 4.228 seconds. And that is how long the ball is in the air. Next, I want to know when is the ball at its maximum height? So we see the word maximum and height. Maximum means Usually I'm looking for the vertex, if I'm talking about a parabola, that's going to be the maximum. And height tells me I have to use that y equation, because y represented the height. We know that to find the vertex of a parabola, you have to do negative b over 2a. Otherwise, you can just graph it on your calculator and use the maximum function. Either way, you end up getting this, if you're doing it by hand because remember the B value was 95 sine of 45 degrees and A is the negative 16. 
you work that out on your calculator and you get 2.099 seconds. Okay, we just discovered when the ball reached its maximum height. Now we're going to find out what is that actual maximum height. So, in order to do that, I'm going to take that 2.099 seconds that I just found and plug that in for t in my t values for the y equation since we were talking about height. So I'm finding the height, y, when the time is 2.099. So I plug in 2.099 for t every time I see it in that equation, and I end up getting 72.508 feet. Next we're going to find the distance that the ball traveled. Now this is the horizontal distance, not the total distance. So we're looking for how far across the field does the ball travel. In order to do this, we're going to plug in that 4.228 that we had previously way back here when we answered how much time the ball is in the air. So I want to find out since the ball is in the air 4.228 seconds so right now at 4.228 seconds the ball will be on the ground so if it is on the ground how far across has it gone? So in order to do that I'm going to plug in the 4.228 in the x equation for t and when I do that on the calculator, I get 284.017 feet. Finally, let's find out if we've made a home run. The fence is 280 feet away from home plate, and the fence is also 8 feet high. Let's find out if it's a home run. So, first of all, I need to figure out where it is horizontally. So, I'm going to use my x equation. I'm going to use 280 feet for my horizontal distance because that is where the fence is. Next, I'm going to solve that and get 4.168 seconds. So now I know that at 4.168 seconds it is at the fence. It might be above it, it might be hitting it, or it might be rolling around on the ground. I really don't know. I can tell you that it is not actually rolling around on the ground because way back here I learned that the ball is going to be in the air for 4.228 seconds, which is longer than the 4.168 seconds. So I know it's still in the air, but now I have to figure out how high the ball is. In order to do that, I'm going to have to use my height equation, the y. So instead of t, I'm going to plug in 4.168 seconds and plug that into the calculator, and it gets me 4.017 feet. Now, my goal was to get the ball at 8 feet, but instead the ball is only going to be at 4 feet high when it's at the fence. So this means not a home run. However, it will hit the fence and hopefully at least get me a double. This is Joyce. She's going to shoot her six foot tall brother with a dart gun from 1600 feet away. She holds the gun at a 56 degree angle, four feet above the ground. The dart fires at an initial rate of 235 feet per second. First, let's determine the parametric equations for both the x and the y. First, for the x, we know that the initial velocity was 235 feet per second, so V sub 0 would be 235. Theta, the angle, was 56 degrees. And the D sub 0 is the initial, the starting point, or if you can think of it as the head start horizontally of this dart. Since we didn't have one, it will be 0. Now for the vertical, the Y of T equation, our V sub 0 is still the same, it's 235 feet per second. Our theta is still the same, it's 56 degrees. This time though, this is a vertical head start. The dart had a vertical head start of 4 feet because Joy shot that dart from 4 feet above the ground. So S sub 0 equals 4. If she misses her target because he moves, how far away will the dart land on the ground? <laughs> Let's 
Let's find out where this dart lands. First, we know that it's going to end up on the ground, so that tells us that the height must be zero. Therefore, I'm going to use the y equation and substitute zero in place of the y of t because the height is zero when it's on the ground. Next, I'm going to solve that, and you can see that this is a quadratic, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula, and I do that, and I solve my positive answer being 12.197 seconds. Now that I have this, I'm trying to find out how far away horizontally it's going to go. So, because it's horizontal, I'm going to use the x equation, and instead of that t, I'm going to put 12.197 seconds. I solve that in my calculator, and that gives me 1,602.811 feet. If her brother remains still, when will the dart hit him? <laughs> now that we have him glued down, we can finally figure out when the dart will hit him. So, since we know the horizontal distance of this boy, x of t would be 1600 because he's 1600 feet away, I'm going to use that x equation. Next, I'm just going to solve for t, so this 0 doesn't matter anymore, so I can just get rid of that. And then I just have this big old number touching t. I don't want them touching, so I'm going to divide both sides by whatever is touching the t. My calculator gives me 12.176 seconds. Now I need to find out how high on his body the dart will actually hit him. Since I just found the time, I can plug that time in for t in the y equation. So here I've plugged in 12.176 in place of t in that y equation to find the vertical distance that the uh, dart will have hit him at 1600 feet horizontally. So I plug all that into my calculator and it gives me 4.173 feet. This means that the dart will hit him again 1600 feet horizontally from where it started and it will be 4.173 feet above the ground. Good morning, madam. Now let's determine if Joyce is successful if she shoots the dart at a 34 degree angle instead. So we'll start this one just the same way we started the others. Instead of theta, though, we're going to change that to 34 degrees. And horizontally, we know that the distance has to be 1600 feet because her brother is still glued into the same place. Next, we're going to solve this by dividing both sides by the 235 cosine of 34, and we get that t is 8.213 seconds. Next, we can plug that 8.213 seconds into the t in the y equation to figure out what the height would be at 8.213 seconds. So I plug that in just like that. I type it all into the calculator, or you can do it in your head if you like and you get 4.079 feet. This means that horizontally the dart will travel 1600 feet and vertically it will be 4.079 feet above the ground. That means since the brother is 6 feet tall that the dart will still hit him even though she changed her angle to 34 degrees. <laughs>